welcome to the pitch workshop. Um, hopefully this is going to be super useful when you're preparing for your pitch presentations, if you ever have any. <laughs> Woohoo! So ba I'm going to start from like the very, very basic. What, so what is the literal meaning of pitching? So when you think about baseball, right? When you think about f a baseball, you have the pitcher. And the pitcher is basically the person that throws the ball to the batter. And the idea or the hope for that pitcher is to pitch that ball so that the bat hits it and hopefully hits a home run. So when you think about when you're delivering your pitch, you want that. You want to be delivering that pitch so that when it lands on the judges, you hit the home run. So that's the literal meaning, but it's usually an investment seeking tool. So you can use it for many things. So it's not just money, although a lot of people associate uh, pitching your business with money. Uh, but it can actually serve you for a lot of things. It can, can serve you to get a meeting. Um, you know, if you, you're asked instead of money, it could be to get a meeting with, you know, somebody that could help you advance in, uh, in your business. Obviously, it's to get funding, um, to get equity, to get support. So don't just think about pitching your business as a way to get money. It's, it can serve you for way, way, way more than, uh, than just that. And the idea for a pitch um, is that we want to make sure that it's simple, it's clear, and it's focused. Especially if you're pitching in, you know, the big powwow pitch coming up shortly, you only have a minute uh, when you are submitted the submitting the initial video. So you, it really needs to be very, you know, simple, focused, and straight to the point, um, so that you're able to convey as much information in that minute. And that minute goes by really quick. Just let me tell you, <laughs> really, really quick. Um, so there are actually, uh, this is for a seven minute pitch, um, but el elements of these are actually in any pitch. You can actually include them in any length of pitch. It depends how much you want to talk about every of the elements, but usually a, um, a good blueprint for a pitch, you're going to have a strong opener. So you start that with a strong opener. Uh, you are you're going to tell the judges or the uh, and you're going to talk in your pitch how is your business solving a problem and i think i'm going to go into these in a little bit of detail later on but you know how is your business solving a problem it doesn't have to be an earth shattering problem you know like but every business um, in order for it to be an actual business it needs to solve a problem for your ideal customer so start thinking about that then this is after you tell, um, you, you know, you're, you explain how your business is uh, solving a problem, then this is where you actually tell them what it is. You either do a demo if, um, if you are somebody who needs to give a demo or you present the product if you have the product in front of you. Um, and, uh, and, and this is actually a really, quick, uh, a, re a really quick part of the presentation. And then you start telling them where you are in your business. You have you had any traction in terms of sales? What is your business model? And by that I mean, how do you make money? Is it an uh, e-commerce only? Is it e-commerce and wholesale? Is it you know a service-based business? Is it business to business? So that's what I mean about business model. Then you talk a little bit about your numbers and your sales. Then you talk about your team. Then you ask them what you need, and then you close it. So again, this is sort of like a, uh, a the blueprint for a longer type of, um, of, um, of pitch. Now, if you were to do a two minute, uh, especially for powwow, um, this is where I would, this is, this is sort of the structure that I would recommend and where you wanna focus on. Um, so the strong opening is going to be really, really important. Um, and this is where I recommend storytelling. And um, a strong opener, when you really think about it, is not just, hi, my name is. You know, that's not necessarily a strong opening. So a strong opener, what I would recommend is use a story. Use a story that is personal. Use a story that is going to connect with the people that are listening to you, right? So the story that kind of made you do what you're doing in your business. Something that is very personal and so personal that the people that you're talking to are actually going to relate to that or you're gonna, that's what you, you want to do. You want them to go like this and relate to that, to that you know, very strong opener. And then, um, and really talking about how your business is solving a problem, which I mentioned it. 
Now, um, I'm going to go to the to the next. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go to this slide. So usually people are really good at the openings, um, especially if you start with the storytelling, right? And and I think in the, in the community, storytelling is actually a gift. <laughs> but, you know, you, you guys are storytellers by nature. So use that to your advantage. Um, so this is where you want to share a memorable, um, a memorable short story, you know, on, on what made you start that business, on how that, you know, idea got triggered. Um, and then, you know, what is your why? Why are you doing it, right? And it's obviously not just about making money, um, but there's got to be a deeper why that is going to make that connection with the people in front of you. And we want to create that connection first and foremost. Um, keeping it simple, you have one minute. <laughs> Usually you want the opening to be about a third of the presentation. So when you think about it, 20 seconds, 20 <laughs> seconds exactly. So this is actually really cool because you can actually, um, you can actually divide the, the blueprint of your one minute pitch presentation by saying in the first 20 minutes, I'm gonna do my opening and perhaps you know tell them exactly what my product is all about or my opening and the problem that I'm solving. Um, so you can, you, know, you can play it that way. Uh, you're gonna keep it simple. Um, please mention the year that you were established. A lot of people tend to not mention this. Um, and it's going to come into play particularly for the businesses that are already making it, um, sales, that are already have traction. Um, once we get to the point where you need to talk about your financials, it's really cool to let them know that, hey, I've only been open for two years, but you know my revenue has grown by 500%. So that's impressive, right? So if you are in the planning stages, mention it, right? I, I'm, I'm pre-revenue or I'm pre-startup, um, and I'm in the planning stages, but I'm, uh, you know, planning to launch in, you know. So just to kind of give the the judges a bit of an idea of where you're at in your journey, um, and then as I mentioned, try to keep it to a third of your presentation maximum. Um, but play by ear. And again, I can't stress enough how important it is the storytelling in your opening. Your opening has to be super, super strong. Um, how is your problem solving a problem? Uh, so how is your business solving a problem? So can you make the problem relatable to the audience? And I'm gonna tell you a very quick, um, a very quick story. It's not really a story, but let's imagine Let's imagine you are, you know, the inventor of the ambulance, right? And you're pitching the ambulance to a group of investors, right? The ambulance has never been launched ever before. And there's two ways that you can go about into pitching the ambulance to the, to the investors in front of you. The first way is to say, you know, uh, we, have, we have created this amazing car that has these beautiful lights and it can go very fast and it's uh, equipped with the latest technology to save lives and, um, you know, and it can get noticed so that we can go through traffic really quickly. So that's one way of pitching the ambulance. The better way, though, to pitch the ambulance is when you're actually focusing on the problem that the ambulance is, pro is solving and you're relating it to the people in front of you. So, for example, a better way to pitch it would be you know, when you're driving in the middle of the night and all of a sudden you get into a car accident or you were to get into a car accident and you're lying on the ground bleeding and you wish that somebody would come to your rescue right away, well, we've created the ambulance. So, you know, and, and, and actually both of you were kind of going like this. That's exactly what I, that's exactly the reaction that we want to create when we're talking about our how our business is solving a problem, right? Like visualizing themselves on the ground, bleeding out. Exactly. <laughs> Obviously, this is a very extreme example, but it's a very visual example of the difference between one and the other, right? So, um, and you don't have to be solving, you know, a, 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 an earth-shattering problem. Um, let's say you are an artist, you know, the problem that it's say you're a beater, you're beating earrings. The problem that you're solving is that, you know, I, you know, there's youth or there are women in this world that have never had the opportunity to connect with their roots, um, their indigenous roots. And my 
my beating provides that to them. So again, you know, there's going to be people that are going to be like, yeah, I didn't have the opportunity to connect to those roots, but now I can thanks to the beating, right? So again, it doesn't, it doesn't have to solve earth shattering problems, but you're definitely, if you have a business, chances are you're solving a problem. So now let's try to figure how, figure out the story, how you're going to tell the story to make that connection so that you get this reaction from the people in front of you. <laughs> um, Marissa, I, can, I think your problem, the problem that you're solving is affordability, right? Luxury and affordability. Yeah, quality and affordability. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, so make that story relatable. You know, sometimes when, you know, we're growing up and, you know, everything is so expensive and we see these things in magazines and when we go in and try to figure out how much they are, we realize that they're out of our league. Um, so just something that, that people in front of you are going to be like, yeah, I can relate with that. And that's the problem that you're solving. So that, and it's a strong visual and it's, and you're making that connection with the people in front of you. So again, you want the buy-in from the people in front of you. Um, and we've already talked <laughs> about yours. So. Um, yeah. So anyway, so, um, then after that, after you tell them the, the problem that you're solving, then you go into the product demo, so on and so forth. So this is where I would recommend either having a visual, if you're going to be doing it in video, is if there is a way that you can have a visual or perhaps like a little TP, a mini TP in front of you, <laughs> mini TP. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can have some sort of visual that could help the people that are trying to visualize what you're doing. Um, something, you know, or, you know, sometimes people have food businesses. Um, if the presentation is in person, uh, normally I recommend bring samples of your food and put them in front of the judges so that they can taste it. If you have uh, art, make sure your art is, is visual. Make sure your art is, it's, people can see what you're doing. For you, Melissa, you can have, you know, um, obviously you're going to be wearing your beautiful lashes, <laughs> but you can have stuff, that, you know, in the background or somewhere where people can see it if you're in video. Um, if, you know, if you're live, you can actually provide a, a sample of what the product that, so that they can see it, they can feel it, they can touch it. So try to make it as easy as possible for the judges to not having to guess what you do, right? So the, the, the more um, visual that you, you can be, the better uh, for, uh, for your case. Because then, then when you're explaining your product or your demo, you're not going to take, you know, the entire presentation telling them how the lights are and how fast the car can go and how loud it can do, you know? So instead, you're just, you put it in front of them or, um, or on the side so that it's actually... Um, they're, they're not having to guess anything. So yeah, so if possible, add this place close to the camera. Uh, for people that are doing any um, uh, in uh, technology, like if you're doing an app or if you're doing anything tech-based, it's usually a good idea. Normally you would go into a demo uh, or you would show some slides with how quickly, you know, how the, the app works. Um, just to give just to give some sort of visual one minute is very short obviously but let's say for people later on they you know they have the three minutes and having something in the background that could give the the judges an idea of um of uh, of what you're creating uh would be very beneficial oh here we go <laughs> i didn't do the slide but anyway so the product in the demo basically that's what's going to connect the pain or the problem that you're solving with the product. You know, it's going to be, the, the judges are going like this, and then if you have, you know, like you know, some sort of a visual or something, they're, they're going to go, oh, you know, it's like, it's like the connection. And, uh, and again, you're not leaving anything to, for them to guess. They're going to be like, it's going to be an easy connection for them. Um, you know, what is unique about your product? This is where you have to be, to state it very clearly. What's unique about your product is, you know, indigenous led, indigenous manufactured, indigenous everything, and it doesn't really exist. For yourself, it's quality, it's affordability, you know, and it's, um, it's you know, like. Customizable, another one. Pardon? 
customizable. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yes. So, so any of the features that you think need to be highlighted when you're talking about the product or, or the service that you're providing, um, make sure that you say it very succinctly. This is the part where usually people tend to go on and on and on and on and on and on to talk about the product, but I would much rather you talk about the problem that you're solving and then very quickly make the connection with the, pro with the, the, the product or the service that you provide. So that then, then they'll be like, okay, I make the connection really quickly. Um, so yeah, so don't overdo it, keep it compact and highlight. Is it the first, the most affordable, the faster, the easier, um, that you have a patent, um, you know, so on and so forth. So this is where uh, you really wanna highlight that. And then where I'm gonna show you, um, because it's gonna be one minute, I am going to show you a one minute pitch. It's gonna fly by my friends, oh my but you will see, and I really want you to pay attention, A, about the storytelling, you know, the, the, the opening storytelling, and I want you to pay attention about how this person talks about the problem and makes the connection with what he's creating, okay? Is it okay if he does his pitch? You wanna do your one minute pitch? Sure. Okay, ready go. Ready, right. who has a timer, okay? Okay. Here, I'll hold your water. Please. All right. Okay, <laughs> timer, Tulio. By show of hands, how many of you have witnessed either a parent, a child, a friend, or maybe your spouse struggle with obesity? You don't have to raise your hand for this one, but think about it. Did you ever feel helpless in their struggle? If you have, you're not alone. Many people who have lived in a low income community like I have, where the obesity rate is above 50%, have experienced the same feeling of helplessness. That's why today I'm doing something about it. Good evening, my name is Horatio Hartz and I'm the founder of Healthy Hearts Institute, the co-op that will bring health and fitness back into our neighborhoods. HHI will turn empty lots into gardens and transform neighborhood food deserts into green nutritional oases. We will turn abandoned buildings into LEED certified fitness centers and provide our members safe places to exercise. Our goal is to get us back to the good old days when the community was ripe with nutritional foods, kids were outside running and playing, and the obesity rate was below 17%. So join the Healthy Hearts Institute and let us empower the beat of your heart. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so did you, did you notice the storytelling and the, the opener? So it was all about storytelling and, it, and he, actually the, the first sentence, the first couple of sentences, he like, talked about the problem. And we could all go like this because we could all, you know, connect with with what he was asking. And I could, you know, yes, we were, we've been all affected by the struggles of obesity, either a family member, ourselves, so on and so forth. So we could, we were going like this, right? COVID. <laughs> I know the co the COVID fifty. <laughs> But yeah, so anyway, so it's, you know, so that's what you want. And that was one minute, guys, right? Obviously, he didn't talk about, you know, how much money he needs, what he would do and all of that, which is what the power pitch is asking you for. But, um, but there's ways of shortening a little bit the storytelling so that you can get those, uh, that information in. So now I'm going to show you, this is going to be, I believe it's a three minute because it's the final pow powwow pitch. Um, presentation, so the final pitch, and he was actually the winner of 2021, Harlan, from um, uh, Smudge the Blades. Um, his company is awesome, so at the end of the day, basically what he sells is he sells t-shirts. Uh, excuse My me, um, t-shirts that are um, uh, hockey inspired, yeah, hockey inspired, and with the sales of that, he's able to sp um, sponsor indigenous youth to play hockey. So it's a great organization, um, and his pitch was fabulous. So this is, this is a three-minute pitch, um, so let's take it away. Next, we have Harlan Wade Kingfisher, founder and CEO of Smudge the Blades. Fancy judges, my name is Harlan Kingfisher, and I'm from Sturgeon Lake First Nation. I'm a husband, father of four, hockey coach, and the founder of Smudge the Blades. We're the only indigenous hockey apparel brand in the world. Indigenous hockey isn't just a sport, it's a cultural celebration, with hockey games bringing thousands of fans to cheer on their communities. 
laughter in the crowds, cooking some mushrooms, cheering, power music on the speakers being played, uh, being played between plays, and sweetgrass being lit before the puck drops. This is what my brand represents. As a young hockey player, it was a struggle for my family to pay registration fees and get new gear every year. I want to help Indigenous youth like myself play the game that can have such a positive impact on their lives. With proceeds from my sales, I have helped um, cover costs for registration fees, purchase hockey gear, and created a hockey scholarship grant for those continuing their education while playing hockey. Also, through our social media, we have been able to create a platform that celebrates Indigenous excellence in the sport of hockey by highlighting young players, elite level athletes, and dedicated parents, grandparents, and coaches, because representation and showcasing Indigenous success is important. I started Smudge Blades in August of 2020. Since we launched our brand, we have been featured on CBC Indigenous, CTV News, TSN Bar Down, and more. I've teamed up with uh, WHL teams, the PA Raiders, and Saskatoon Blades for custom apparel, and I'm currently in talks with the National Women's Hockey League and the NHL. In our first year of operation, our annual revenue was $180,000 from online sales and another $25,000 from wholesale orders to sports stores and gift shops. From the $205,000 of revenue in our first year of operation, our profit margin is 62%. Smudge of Blades has one of the best conversion rates in apparel and accessories on Shopify and is in the top 5% of stores that launch the same week as us. If we were to win Power Pitch, we would use the money for digital marketing, website development, stock up on inventory for the hockey and Christmas season, and add more money toward hockey scholarship grant. Um, my future aspirations for my brand would include getting into major stores like Pro Hockey Life, Canadian Tire, and partnering with well-established hockey brands. Thank you, and hi hi. <laughs> So, um, so that was three minutes. So you can see, yeah. <laughs> so that's the final. So with Pow Wow, I believe the first video or the first one is, um, it's a minute. Then does it go to two minutes? Yeah, just a minute. Now it's two minutes. Oh, that was two minutes? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So it's only a minute to submit, like to, for your entry. And then the final is a two minute, but he was able to get, you know how I mentioned the seven steps on the, yeah. the financials and all of that. He was able to, to squeeze all of those elements into that two minute pitch. Um, so, so yeah, but, uh, he did a great job. He did an awesome job. Um, and, uh, but there was some elements of storytelling. You could see the storytelling, you could see the problem that he's solving. Um, and you could see the impact that he's having in the community through his business um, and um, and the financial, he did talk about financials and profit margins, which is fabulous. Usually that's the part that um, that is missing at the beginning uh, for many uh, first time pitchers. Um, but uh, but yeah, so that these are these are amazing examples. I would recommend that before you structure your final pitch, you go through the Pow Wow YouTube channel and you take a look at their winning, you know, is it the, the pitch grand finales? I think there's, um, yeah, you can, you can do just Pow Wow pitch grand finale and you can see all of the, all of the different pitches. Obviously don't, don't try to like, don't copy them, but use them as inspiration. If there is any, you know, lines that they're using that are like, Ooh, you know, like this, this actually, you know, it can, it can uh, add something to my own pitch as well. So, um, so anyway, so just take a look at them because they have, there were so many great pitches. Obviously this is the grand winner. Um, so, uh, just, I recommend, recommend you really go do the research, um, so that you can get some, some inspiration for your own pitch. Okay. So where are you right now as a business? So usually this is where you, if you are pre-revenue, if you're pre-sales, this is where I would recommend, um, that you validate that there is a need for this, right? Uh, whether, and, and you don't necessarily have to include it because you have a very strong business idea, but, but normally it would be, you know, in doing validation surveys, doing some market research, um, you know, there, there are locally, there are, um, you know, some of the validation, even if you're pre-startup, there is absolutely no birthday party um, businesses that focus on indigenous teachings. So that is validation, right? Like, or from, you know, all of these different numbers of birthday party companies or birthday party companies in Ottawa or in Canada, none of them target indigenous teachings. So as a judge, 
it, it visualizes that there is a hole and there is an opportunity, right? So if you're a pre-startup, you need to validate, you need to to show that there that there that there is an opportunity for the type of business that that you want to open. Okay, if you're already uh, revenue generating business, this is where you prove that you have customer traction. Um, and you know, if you are already selling, <clears throat> mention it. Uh, have you have any milestones so far? How much you know? Um, uh, you know, what are your numbers? What is your your revenue? If you feel like you want to share this. Um, so yeah, you know, mention, and it doesn't necessarily have to be money if you don't want to share that, but you can say, you know, I have over a um, hundred customers, loyal customers, and you know, twenty percent of them are um, influential people in the makeup artistry mm -hmm. world. You know, like, but some sort of numbers would be very, very good, so that the judges can see. That there is a that there is not just a need, but that you actually are filling a void in in the industry. Um, then the other thing that I would recommend um, people mention, and Harlan was really good at this, is to speak about what is their business uh, model. What is your revenue model? How do you make money, right? So for you, it's e-commerce, right? But you're also doing wholesale, I believe. So exactly. So mention that you're doing. Um, uh, e-commerce, wholesale, and some, you know, retail opportunities as well. So, so that the, then the judges see, oh, okay, so she, they're not only focusing on one way of making money, they're looking at different ways of expanding the, the channels of getting money, right? Um, for yourself, I think it's, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious, like it would be a service-based business. Um, let's say if you go to the two minute mark, this is where I would recommend you say, you know, I will launch with a service based model, but there is an opportunity to expand on add on sales online by providing different packages and, uh, and experiences and whatnot so that they can see that it's not just a service, but then that you are also thinking about other ways of making money. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, because let's say, you know, somebody loved the the blankets. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could be a reseller of those blankets yeah. through your own online store, right? So you could, so this is this is a part that if you have, when, if and when you have more than the minute, this is where you really tell them about, you know, the business model right now, how I'm, but the plan is to blah, okay? Um, so yeah, so where's the cash coming from? How does your business make money? And uh, what makes your business profitable or sustainable? So this is where you tell them. Is the, um, where the cash coming from just how you're funding? No, no, like how, how are you, how, yeah. So yours is e-commerce mostly, um, but and, and some retail opportunities and some wholesale. So yeah, so that's where. Subscription model is for people that, like a yeah, like a box, like okay. a gift, like a, yeah, like you have subscriptions. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you can mention it that you do, you, you do direct to consumer, uh, you do, you have a subscription, um, box as well. Right now it's the makeup artists that are utilizing subscriptions. Perfect. So subscription, uh, subscription model with, um, with professionals in the industry or makeup artists in the industry. So yeah, so this is basically a way for you to let them know that the business is be it's more than whatever they're thinking in their heads, right? Where you're and then and they see your vision. They can see what oh okay, so she's hustling, right? So so this is where we wanna that we wanna see as judges or the judges wanna see. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Where, that 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 um, that there is vision, you know, that the entrepreneur has has big, has big vision. Not stuck in the box. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, financials. This is a part that a lot of people avoid. They don't want to talk about financial because the numbers are scary. Perhaps you don't know about your numbers, and that's totally okay. But when you're pitching, it's probably time for you to really look at those numbers. Uh, and try to understand them so that you're able to feature them on a pitch. Obviously, pre-revenue, that's, uh, or, or as, uh, uh, if you're just thinking about a business, obviously this will leave it out. 
Um, but if you are revenue generating, this is where, you know, um, you know, where you really need to not know your numbers. Have you invested money already? And you don't have to talk about all of them. Uh, what are your financial projections? Have you raised money? What is your five year future milestones? You know, this is where we can really play with what we're going to highlight. Would you mention it in your one minute pitch? Um, minute. We can, we're gonna work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but there's going to be some questions that you want to answer in this section, okay? So it's like, what is your revenue model? Uh, so it's e-commerce wholesale, so I'm kind of going to repeat a little bit. Um, where are your sales at, right? And this is where you can choose a time frame. You know, you can say, since, um, you know, since, since I founded the business in, you know, 2022 or 2021, I've generated X number of dollars. So... Yeah. Um, I always, I think I had read it online last year, but you have to have been two years into your business in order to pitch. Is that still a thing? I don't know. I don't think so because I don't think so. Yeah, because that's why I didn't do it last year because I had read that you needed to be two years. I don't know. Oh, I'm like, I'll wait until next year then. Oh. No, because no, I've seen, um, because I coach the finalists usually. I coach all of the finalists and a lot of them, I, there are some of them have just started yeah yeah so okay. anyways so yeah so this is where you choose a time frame of your numbers whatever whatever you want to highlight right um has there been growth every month you know we're growing at a 20 percent month over month uh 20 percent rate um uh what are your financial goals uh you know paint a picture Paint a picture for 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 the judges. Um, okay, so this is how we can combine. This is, these are the like type of sentences that you can use, <laughs> where you can combine traction, business model, and financial plan all in one nice little tight sentence. Okay, so you can say we closed our first year of operations with X revenue in our e-commerce shop, or we're growing at a rate of you know, X percent month over month over month. And uh, our uh, customers, you know, across Canada and the United States. If you have customers not like in the US and in Canada, I think that should be noted. And Australia. And Australia. Absolutely. So I think, I think that should be noted in your pitch because it's obviously, you know, you're breaking barriers and you're breaking frontiers, right? So, uh, or our average net profit is, like if your net profit is very strong, then definitely mention it. Um, or if you have a goal to start, you know, aggressively wholesaling to retail next year, mention it, you know, and, and increase our revenue by X percent. Like this is basically the fact that the part where we really want to highlight that you know your numbers, uh, but they also have a vision of growth, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so like, I would probably highlight, because the numbers aren't the greatest, just because the lashes are so cheap. Mm -hmm. like, a large volume yeah, yeah. to hit a lot of money. Mm -hmm. um, but in the first quarter, I've already reached what I made last year. Absolutely, so then. That's what I would highlight then. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and your goal for this year is what compared to last year? So, so think about this. Okay. So instead of saying we've already reached the sales, because explaining that it can it can take a long time, right? Because you have one minute, yeah. right? So instead you can say we're on track. So if you if you if if you keep selling at the rate that you're selling right now, what would be the final number at the end of the year compared to last year? So you can say we're on track of growing, you know, by our sales by 200%, 300% at the end of the year, okay. right? So again, there's ways of making it, making it look, you're not lying, mm -hmm. right? You're not lying. You're not disclosing the numbers, but you're showing them that A, you know your numbers and B, you are, you're thinking ahead. You are looking you're looking at your numbers ahead and you kind of have a goal and, and you know the number. So that's what they want to see, okay? 
Uh, yeah, so our goal is to open international markets and start exporting, if that is a goal, so on and so forth. So this is for revenue generating um, companies. This is just like a nice little way to combine traction, business model, and financial um, plan all in one. Um, you have a minute. You know, there's only so much you can... <laughs> you can <laughs> Exactly. There's only so much you can do in there, right? I think it's better to use percentage over dollar. I, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So for the people at home, if you didn't hear that, if your sales number is not as impressive, but your growth percentage is, then let's talk percentage, right? So let's say if you sold a thousand dollars last year, but you know you sold two thousand this year, then say we grew by one hundred percent. So, <laughs> so that's more impressive. Um, so yeah. So there's you don't have to lie. I and actually don't lie, but. But look at your, look at, first of all, look at your numbers, <laughs> know your numbers, and then see how you can, you can dissect it so that you're able to, to articulate growth or potential, right? Um, now, so these are, these are musts. So the strong opener, the problem solving, the business model traction financials, these are a must. Yeah, a must if you're, uh, if you're gener uh, revenue generating. These are really good to include um, because <laughs> I've watched a lot of powwow pitches in the past, and I and after the pitch there is a Q and A. So okay. judges, well, uh, and this is not. Um, I'm not sure if in the one minute. No, obviously not in the one minute because you send it. But in the uh, semifinals and finals, there is a Q and A section. And it's, in it's well, it's been online. No, it's online. Okay. But but you're it's live. but it's live. It's live but online. Yeah. So it's not necessarily live because you send in your recording, but the Q&A is live. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've watched a lot of Q&As, oh, a lot in the past couple of years. And, um, and, and based on all of the questions that the judges are asking, I kind of uh, took inventory of what is it that they're asking for. So I'm just including, you know, from what I've heard the judges ask and over and over and over again, um, these are the recommendations on what's good to have, okay? In, in, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the one minute pitch right now. If you can squeeze it in, if it makes any difference, great. Um, but definitely for like down the road, the two minute, you know, once they're asking the questions, before they ask the question, just answer it. And it's about your team. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of solopreneurs, totally fine, okay? But, you know, you can mention how big your team is, if it's a big team. Uh, or even if it's your, just yourself, right? You know, who supports you in your business? If your staff is mostly female, mention it. Um, if your staff is mostly First Nations, mention it. For you, that's gonna be one of your selling, uh, one, one of your biggest features is that your team and your suppliers and your providers, uh, it's, you know, it's all indigenous lead based manufactured. So I think that's going to be the biggest selling feature for you. So definitely mention it. Um, if you have a business where you're hiring, you know, youth mention it, you know, anything that, that is cool, that is unique, that, that needs to be highlighted in terms of team mention it. I know that these were the questions that they were asking the judges, like who's in your team? How big is your team? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing is that, um, and I think that's in the in the application, is if you win the $25,000, what would you do with that money? And as you could hear from Harlan, he said, you know, if I win, this is what I would invest it in. I would say go beyond that. So go, you know, go beyond what you will do with the winnings. Um, but more than anything, how by you doing what you're gonna do with your winnings is going to impact your community, okay? So, for example, oh, yeah. So if I win the powwow pitch or if I win the $25,000, um, then what are the clear consequential events that are gonna happen? You know, I'm gonna use it for marketing, using it to blah, blah, blah. In turn, uh, my company is gonna grow, obviously, you know, and, and reach my goal of, 
launching the business or reach my goal of, you know, uh, opening more markets, international markets for my sales. Um, but then, in, and through this goal, I'll be able to hire more indigenous youth, uh, hire more indigenous manufacturers. You know, how, how will your growth impact your community? Is that maybe where I would include, like, I want to give back to A7G, Assembly of Seventh Generation, so it's for the indigenous community? Yeah, kids absolutely. Yeah, you can include that, but I would say also, you know, then by by launching and growing the business, I I will be able to hire you know indigenous and hire indigenous you know staff manufacturers, but also donate to blah blah blah. Okay. So it's like the impact, right? So I think um, a lot of the times what I see is that people talk about what they will do with the money and they stop there, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no 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 no, give me a bigger picture, like. Mm-hmm. Let me be in your shoes of what that would be like, not just for, you know, the the mechanical things that are going to happen with the money, but what is going to be the the ripple effect of that? How is your company going to grow or launch? And then what what is the the, the impact that the company is going to have because of that growth? OK. And then closing. You know, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that your closing is memorable. Usually what I like, um, again, it's a minute, so it's very tight. But if you start with a strong story or a strong opener, you know, make sure that the closer ties it in, you know, that, that you bring it full circle. Um, it's, it's, it has to convey your passion. It has to, it has to, it has to let the judges know that you're the right person to lead the company that you're leading. Um, And at the end of the day, (laughs) people invest in people, right? So uh, the judges are going to invest not in the business at the end of the day, they're going to invest in you. So this is where you really need to bring it home, really need to bring the passion that you are the person that they need to invest in. Okay. Um, You know, this is where, um, you know, yeah. So anyway, so just this is this is it has to be short, concise, but a really good way of doing it is by maybe bringing it back to the story, the initial opener, the initial storytelling. And would you give it like the last ten seconds of your minute? No. Fifteen? Less? Twenty? <laughs> oh, to like, give the judges the last ten? No, like, like the the opening was twenty seconds. Oh. Middle twenty. It really depends. Okay. It depends. It's it. Initial, and and, and then, thank you. Yeah. And yeah. So no, just finish with, you know, I believe every woman deserves to feel beautiful and not have to, you know, break the bank. Break the bank. Um, perhaps if you, you can start with, if you experience that, you ex- if, if you had a personal experience of wanting, you know, wanting to do something for yourself, but not being able to afford it. Those are the stories that people are going to relate with because you're not the only one. And then you can close it with, you know, I'm doing this so that every woman can feel beautiful without breaking the bank and, um, and, and not have to go through whatever, you know, like, I don't know, like not spend all their money, but let's, let's, you know, this is where you tie it, right? Where you, where, where your business is not just about you making money, but you're actually doing it to make every woman happy and make every woman feel beautiful, without, you know, having to. Without them spending all the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So this is where where it has to be powerful. This is where you really need to convey the passion and that you're the right person uh, for this business. There is a roadmap which is basically summarizing everything that I just said. Um, I will send the slides, and I believe the slides are going to be posted. I think so, yes. The slides are going to be posted in the back end of the the membership place. Um, So you can see the roadmap. Uh, I will email it to you guys. Um, So yeah, so anyway, so everything that I just said is basically here is the roadmap with some questions to prompt you. And basically what I want is I want to make sure that, you know, you don't, you have sort of a place to start, you know, like a kind of like a structure. One of the most important 
important things about pitching is practicing though you know you can have the best written pitch the best roadmap but if you don't practice it's going to be really hard to bring it home um there is a uh, for people that suffer from nerves especially if you're going to be presenting live in person there is a beautiful TEDx talk or TED talk that I'm not going to play because it's 20 minutes long, but I will, the link is here. Um, and it's basically how um, using the power pose. I'm not sure if you guys heard of this. This is um, so power posing has, it's a, basically a way of standing before it's standing like a superhero. It's like the superhero pose. And it's been scientifically proven science like they've been they've done like you know genetic not genetic testing but some sort of testing where it's proven that um the you know the hormones that help you feel more uh self self secure like self assured increase by just doing this five minutes ten minutes before you go into a very stressful situation so this is actually the ted talk from the scientist yeah, from the scientist who did this, and she goes on into explaining, you know, the the research that she did and the differences when people would go like this, when and when people would go like this, and it was like scientifically proven, and and in the hormones and whatever, it was like you can see that by doing this, you are biologically helping your body to help you be more. Um, more confident. So it's really cool. It's a really cool TED talk. So if you're ever, you know, before you go on recording your video, you know, it, it's it sounds silly, but it actually works. So anyway, so just check it out if you're into this thing. Um, uh, you know, I just thought I would share. Exactly. <laughs> before you go to an interview, before you go, it's she and 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 the talk is actually very powerful too. So. Um, but yeah, so at the end of the day, practice, 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 have, have a really, like have your roadmap um, and the structure of your pitch, but practicing is, is going to go a long way, timing it too, timing it one minute. <laughs> and obviously this is, this is the two minute roadmap. There's going to be some stuff that you might think, mm, I might not include this much. <laughs> you know what at the end I know he was talking fast because <laughs> he was reading it too right ideally reading it I mean whatever but ideally if you can if you can talk the way you normally talk so that you can convey that passion that's advisable but you know we're also constricted to a minute at, at the beginning I just have to, I know I just don't speak very fast mm -hmm. yeah yeah, but um like you keep the speed of your tapping. Yeah. Yeah, but for for revenue generating businesses, if you include the business model financials in in that one minute, that's going to set you apart from other people that have never pitched before because usually that's the part that is missing for for some reason is the part that, you know, we, we don't really think about it when we're pitching for the first time but now you know. <laughs> and this is it. So hopefully this was helpful. Good luck to everybody that is going into pitching season. And uh, hopefully you guys can, can, bring, can bring the home run home. <laughs> Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs>